everyone, and welcome to another special edition of the Hacking Humans podcast. This is an occasional series we're calling Hacking Humans Goes to the Movies. I'm Dave Bittner from the CyberWire, and joining me is my Hacking Humans co-host, Joe Kerrigan from the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute. Hello, Joe. Hi, Dave. On this show, Joe and I look at clips from some of our favorite movies and perhaps the occasional TV show, clips which demonstrate some of the scams and schemes we talk about on Hacking Humans. And joining us once again this week is Rick Howard, the CyberWire's Chief Security Officer and Chief Analyst. Hello, Rick. Hey, guys. Glad to be here. We've got some fun clips to share, so stay tuned. We'll be right back after this message from our show sponsor. Keeper is the top-rated cybersecurity platform for protecting organizations of all sizes, from the most common password-related data breaches and cyber attacks. Did you know 81% of data breaches are caused by weak password security? Keeper is more than a password manager. It's a scalable and customizable security platform that includes industry-leading features such as automated user provisioning, role-based enforcement policies, SSO SAML integration, advanced reporting compliance, breach watch dark web monitoring, and more. Members of the CyberWire community will receive a free three-year personal password manager when they take a business demo. Visit Keeper.io slash CyberWire to learn more. And we thank Keeper for sponsoring our show. All right, we've got some fun clips to share this week. And uh, Joe, you're going to start things off for us. What do you have for us this week? Uh, my, my clip actually comes from one of my favorite shows, uh, The Simpsons. <laughs> oh, this is The from... Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> and this is from, I think, season 12. Uh, it's which is while when the show was still good. Now the show's gone downhill <laughs> considerably. Now, like, now, now, now. Okay. Calm but, those nerd tendencies, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> worst show ever. Um, so, <laughs> so in this episode, uh, Bart has uh, uh, acquired an interest in magic, and what has happened at he was going to go out and do a magic show and uh, you know collect money with a hat, uh, but that didn't go well. And Homer says, I'm leaving you here. And Bart, looking all sad and dejected, uh, starts to get handouts, money from people, and uh, eventually winds up getting enough money that he can take a cab home. Mm. He passes Homer in the cab, and then Homer and Bart realize, hey, this is where the money is. The money is in scamming people. <laughs> of course. Sure. So they go, out they, <laughs> they, go, they go out and they buy a book. Uh, and the, they're up in the treehouse, and that's where the clip starts. They're going through the book. And let's listen. This book has all the classic cons. There's the pigeon drop, the earwigger, the brilsting grab. Do you have any father and son griffs? Well, there's the Albany ham scam. Interesting. Picture of two guys running away from the cop with pigs. (laughs) And so now they're sitting there and they're they're frosting an old throw pillow and Marge walks in. Why are you frosting that old throw pillow? I could ask you the very same question. (laughs) Should I just back out of the room? Would you? Typical Homer and Marge here. <laughs> That's my go-to move in my house. Look at that. Right. Ready for our first con? So now they're at the, uh, the Let's pier. trim the mark. Nice use of the lingo, Homer. Ten four, Kimasabi. Bart has the uh, the cake or the uh, the pillow, the frosted pillow in a box. He puts on a pair of glasses and a, has a white cane. And have Stands behind tomorrow. Kent Brockman, who's on the phone. Kent turns around and bumps into Bart, who now pretends to be blind. Where's my cake? It's all right, isn't it? Uh, What have you done, you clumsy Homer approaches. (gasps) That cake was for your deaf sister. Sir, And lays it on a little bit thicker. No, no, don't protect him. You'll work off that cake in the acid mines. No, 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 I'll pay for the cake. I wish that I had those for my kid. (laughs) Of integrity. (laughs) Right. So now Kent Brockman feels bad for... uh, What should we buy first? A singing rubber fish, of course. There you are. How's the magic act? That's good what enough. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So now they come home and they're they're Marge and Lisa still believe they're doing the magic act, right? But uh, what happened was uh, Kent Brockman bumped into Bart. Homer yells at him and uh, threatens him. You know, like you'll work this off in the acid mines mm-hmm. <laughs> and. <laughs> doesn't he doesn't say doesn't say anything to Kent like hey you owe me money right he he makes Kent feel bad about Bart oh here's this guy with the, this poor kid with his abusive father mm-hmm. uh, let me let me see if I can buy this kid out of a out of a day in the acid mines 
um, and hands in the money, and they make a lot of money doing this. And this is an old uh, scam called the the melon drop hmm. uh, that comes in, in Japan. Melons were very expensive oh, uh, interesting. at one point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was Japan, maybe somewhere else. But anyway, someone would go out and they'd buy a a, a melon, they'd break up the melon. Uh, and they put it in a box, the broken up box, uh, or broken up melon in a box. And then they let somebody bump into them very much in this in this fashion. And they go, "Oh, you broke my melon because the melons were um, expensive." And they oh. person they demanded the person pay them for it. They, they, now this happens also with like things like a vase. They put mm-hmm. a bunch of uh, broken glass in a vase, and they say, "I just paid fifty dollars for that vase." Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's it's not a fifty dollar vase. It's a a bunch of broken stuff. So the best way to protect yourself when this happens uh, is to say to the person that that has just bumped into you, you know what? I'm very, very sorry. You know who should know about this is the police. We should get the police involved to make sure that that this goes off well. Uh, you know, I've committed a terrible crime here. Let's um, <laughs> let's get the law en- law enforcement involved. I'll turn myself in and throw myself in the tender mercies of the court. Mm-hmm. Usually, when they hear the police are coming, they'll just go uh, and they'll they'll get frustrated and walk away. Yeah. What do you make of this, Rick? I would just like to point out that, you know, uh, Bart and Homer, you know, being the resident cybersecurity canon guy, all right, that they went and got a book to learn <laughs> right. how to con people, all right? So yeah, if yeah. Bart can read a book, so can everybody else. That's what I'm going to say, right? Yeah. right. <laughs> well, and who knew such resources were available at your local library, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. I like it. I like it a lot. And you know what? The other thing I like about this is uh, it's it's always great to be able to learn things while you're laughing. Right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Exactly. All right. Well, we will have a link to that segment in the show notes so uh, you can check out the actual clip from the show there. Uh, why don't we move on to you, Rick? You brought a, a clip for us today. Uh, tell us what you got. So my clip is from the 1973 movie Paper Moon. Have you guys seen this movie? When's the last time you saw it? No, I haven't seen it. it not familiar it's with it. It's an oldie but goodie, all right? Directed by Peter Bogdanovich, probably most famous for directing the 1971 movie, The Last Picture Show. Mm. And it stars Ryan O'Neill, and he's probably most famous for the 1970 movie, Love Story. And get this, his 10-year-old daughter, Tatum O'Neill, who won Ah. the Best Supporting Actress Academy Award for her performance for this picture, and is still the youngest actor to have ever won that award. And, you know, we're doing this in October, so in the spirit of Halloween, she beat out Linda Blair that year the child actress in The Exorcist, wow. who was four huh. years her senior. How about that? Yeah. So in this scene, Ryan O'Neill is executing the 510 con. It's in a little dime store somewhere in the Midwest. The clerk is played by Dorothy Price, and it's the only movie she ever made. But she is absolutely fabulous. I just love her. So let's run the clip. It's short, and I'll try to explain it. All right. You look real nice in that ribbon. First off, I didn't know, was she a boy or a girl? I'm a girl. Well, it makes all the difference. Ain't you got a sweet little face somehow? Oh, seeing how I just got paid today, we'll take a ribbon in each color. How much is that going to set me back? Well, that'll be 15 cents. Bought my grandchildren ribbons just like this last holiday time. Grandchildren? I don't believe it. You break a five? Well, you can believe it all right. I'm just as old as I look. So now, here you be. That's one, two... Three, four, five. You know, this old wallet of mine's about to bust its size. I'll give you five ones back. You give me that $5 bill. How many grandchildren you got all together? Well, I got two little granddaughters, nine-year-old and ten-year-old. Two grandsons near 16. And I got a grandson 35 years old. Oh, come on. You're pulling my leg. <laughs> Why don't you just give me a $10 bill? Here's the five. The five ones are there. That way I won't be so quick to see it break apart. Six children, huh? My, I my, got my. a daughter, 51. Oh, now, I don't mean to be handing you no line, but that's just pretty hard to believe you got a 51-year-old child. (laughs) You can believe it, all right. (laughs) I'm afraid I'd have to see it to believe it. Much obliged. (laughs) See you again. Uh, Y'all come back. Did you guys catch the con? Uh, Did he give her a sixth one? He did not. Okay. Although I did think that when I first saw it the first 10 times. All right, so (laughs) So good (laughs) <laughs> so to, to help set the scene here, if folks aren't aren't familiar with it. This is taking place inside of a little shop, like a, a little you know right. store, little small town store, right? right. Where you'd yep. be able to buy all sorts of things. And the woman in this clip is the shopkeeper. So the business yep. part of this is, as we heard, is her making change. 
Um, and I have to say, I followed along and I did not see the scam. It did not jump out at me. Of course, I knew there had to be a scam here because this is, you know, the point of the this show is, here. Right. But, but it's not obvious to me exactly what the mechanism was that was going on here. So, do, yeah, Rick, so can you I, explain it? Yeah. So, I, I watched this thing 10 times and I still didn't see what he did, right? I hmm. had to go to the Reddit conspiracy channels just to find somebody <laughs> who could explain it, right? So, the trick here is twofold. Uh, Joe talks about this all the time in his and your guys' show. It's misdirection is one main thing, and then layering. The misdirection by distracting the clerk about her family, mm -hmm. and layering by instigating multiple legitimate money exchanges with the con in the middle, kind of like a con sandwich, right? So hmm. he pays fifteen cents for the ribbons and gets four dollars and eighty five cents back. So right. he's even. Right. He pockets the change. So now he has four bills. He uses one of his own bills to get her uh, to give her five ones in exchange for a five dollar bill. He's even again. All right? right. She keeps the ones in her hand and never puts them back. So then he distracts her with questions. And with the five dollar bill that she just gave him says, how about give me a ten dollar bill? So he hands her his five. He's down $5 now, but as asked, she hands him the $10 bill, and now he's up $5. Hmm. Genius, okay? Genius. Hmm. And I looked for that many times and did not see it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't, I still, I, I gotta, I gotta see it again. I'm gonna have to watch this again, I think. Yeah. Um, Even so, after that explanation, I looked and I still didn't get it, All right, So, so he, it's, that, it's that clever, yeah. He gives her five ones, and she gives him a five. Yes. Okay. So, oh, so he has, has the five. The, she has the ones in her hand now and never puts them in the cash register. Right. Right. So he, while she's still holding on to those five ones, he hands her the five that she just yep. handed him and says, I yeah. tell you what, let me hand you this five along and, and along with the five you have in your hand, that makes 10. So let's yes. trade the five you have plus the five I have, and you can just give me 10 in exchange for that. Exactly. And because he's so smooth about it and so quick, she goes for it. And, and he I makes $5. That, yeah, and the trick there is that they got to get out of Dodge very quickly because, you know, what you don't see in the clip is she starts to figure out that something's going on, but right. they're already gone by the time they do, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and this is a common scam. I mean, if you go on... Um, YouTube, you can see countless examples of, of security cameras, you know, people in convenience stores. Uh, and I, I think they refer to it as a making or short change scam is, yep. is how it's referred uh, to. Quick change. Yeah. Quick change, mm -hmm. short change. Yeah. So uh, this one still works today. And you can see why. I mean, it. it <laughs> all yeah. of us, we, we, we knew that we were going to be seeing a scam. Right. And it still didn't jump out to us as to what exactly the scam was. That's why these cons are really like magic tricks, right? Even though right. you know the magician on stage is doing magic, you're looking for it, you don't see it, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And as this clip points out, as you say, Rick, you know, uh, the the scammers drive off. They get out of Dodge as fast as they can, drive yeah. off in their car, and then you see the woman at the cash register, and she's she's like, wait a minute, what just happened? Wait a right. second. <laughs> <laughs> and by then, it's too late. <laughs> how do you how do you protect yourself against this? Oh, that's a great question. Right. I actually uh, actually I have an answer for that. Yeah. All right, not. let's hear it, Jim. So yeah. uh th this comes from uh, a discussion I had years ago. Uh and the the key problem here is that when she is in the process of changing money, she still has money in her hands when he starts asking for the uh for the next thing. So when you work at a at a till at a cash register, somebody says, Hey, this is about to break my wallet open. So, you know, let me have five ones for a uh, uh let me have a five for these five ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. At that point in time, you shut down all the other input. You take the five ones, you count the five ones out and let them go on about everything else. Don't don't talk, don't engage them, put the five ones into the cash register, take a $5 bill out, close the till, hand the customer the $5 bill. Mm, right. Mm -hmm. So one at a time. Right. And, and I've heard stories. This is, I've heard anecdotes that this actually frustrates these people and they, they just walk away. 
Hmm. Uh, I don't know how effective it is. I don't know uh, anything about it, but th- th- and it seems like this would work to me. So that's my recommendation is, right. is one at a time. So take away their ability to layer these transactions on top of each other. Exactly. And to distract you with their smooth conversation. Yes. Yeah. Smooth talking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, gentlemen, uh, both fun clips today. Good things to learn from. Uh, so thank you both for bringing those to us. We want to thank our sponsor, Keeper Security, for helping make this episode possible. Cybersecurity starts with password security. Password security starts with Keeper. We want to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, And, of course, we want to thank the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute for their participation. You can learn more at isi.jhu.edu. The Hacking Humans podcast and Hacking Humans Goes to the Movies is proudly produced in Maryland at the startup studios of Data Tribe, where they're co-building the next generation of cybersecurity teams and technologies. Our senior producer is Jennifer Iben. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie. I'm Dave Bittner. I'm Joe Kerrigan. And I'm Rick Howard. Thanks for listening.